So electrolysis is used to make oxygen in the International Space Station and in the industrial production of aluminium. You can also remove unwanted facial hair. Now this isn't officially the IB uh, knowledge that you need, but it's helpful because electrolysis, you're putting electricity in to break stuff up. So electrolysis for hair, you're putting electricity in. Oh yeah, be careful about the, the last day. You don't want to leave that little moustache there. Electro means electricity and lysis comes from uh, the word to split. So splitting stuff up with electricity. So electrolysis, you're putting electricity in, you're turning electrical to chemical energy. That's what this video is about. But it's very easy to get this confused with the voltaic cell, electrochemical galvanic cell, same thing. That's where you get electricity out, turning chemical to electrical energy. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at putting electricity in, just like the hair removal. So let's say you wanted tungsten and bromine. Neither of those can be found in nature in their, in their regular states. So you have to stick electricity through tungsten bromide in order to get it. And so that diagram shows the basic setup. Again, sodium and chlorine, you're not going to find those in nature. So zap some sodium chloride and you'll get both of them. The power source has to be DC, direct current. That means that the electrons only go one way in the external circuit. That's good. So what other sort of current is there? Well, there's AC, and that's where the electrons go back and forth, back and forth, 50 or 60 times a second. And that's going to mess up your products. You're going to have a little bit of each product at each electrode. Every 50th of a second, it will react, and you'll be back where you started. It's as if the battery's being flipped back and forth, back and forth. That's bad. You don't want AC. You're going to mix up your products. AC is alternating current. Should have mentioned that. So the wires, they're conductors. They allow the passage of electricity and they are unchanged by the passage of that electricity. The electrodes that you stick into what you're going to electrolyze are normally graphite or platinum. Those are very resilient to the high temperatures and corrosive environments of electrolysis. And the electrolyte, well, that's the substance that conducts electricity as a liquid or as aqueous and is chemically decomposed in the process. As a solid, it's an insulator. By the way, all these are the best IB definitions that I can find. So liquid salt, aqueous salt, those are all good electrolytes. So I'm going to draw in a little battery there. It would have to be a car battery to do electrolysis. You need a, a high current. The anode is the positive electrode and the cathode is the negative electrode. That's new for the syllabus this year. So the IB likes to do lead bromide. I wouldn't want to do that myself in real life. The fumes are terrible. Give your brain damage and corrode your face off. Nasty. But the lead's going to end up as a liquid because the process is very hot. And the bromine is going to end up as a gas, even though you'd expect that to be a liquid too. Because again, you have to melt this lead bromide in order to get it to work. More in the next video. Now, you can also use electrolysis to produce hydrogen for hydrogen-powered cars. And just for interest's sake, this is the fuel tank of a hydrogen-powered car. My God, look at, the, uh, look at the armor on that. And so that's the windscreen wipe electrolysis. Don't do that. That's the Mexican Bandito electrolysis, and finally the Charlie Chaplin. Avoid those. So how should you get electrolysis? Ah, random hair removal. That isn't IB either.